family. She sat comfortably in her favorite armchair, with her trousered legs stretched out, her unshod feet in front of the gas fire. Inside the woolly socks, her toes wriggled occasionally in the warmth. At half arm's length, she held an open broadsheet newspaper. From somewhere on the other side of the pages, she could hear the sound of voices. Two young children. They were called Pat and Pip, and they were seven-year-old twins. Pat, short for Patrick, liked football, and Pip, short for Pippa, liked playing with toy dolls. Unless Pat was short for Patricia, and she liked netball, while Pip was short for Pippin, and he liked Action Man, she never could remember. The voices continued, obliviously chattering away, as usual. She could never understand what they were talking about, so now she paid them no attention. Who's got my stuff? The new voice came from the next room, and belonged to her husband, George. Jorge? Jordi. It might have been Gorka. Has anyone taken my stuff? Called Gorka, accompanied by the sound of random searching through sheafs of paper. Then... Stop looking, everyone. I found it. They were under the... thing. The children did not break the flow of their conversation at the sound of their father's regular nightly shouts from the next room, and their mother continued to read the newspaper. Some minutes later, after she had turned a page, with Pip and Pat still speaking, there came the sound of George's heavy footsteps leaving the next room and clumping upwards towards the attic where he kept his computer. Time for bed, children, she said, still reading. The two voices receded to the left as they stood and walked out, then were joined by the sound of two pairs of feet climbing the stairs, like two miniature versions of Geordie's clumping. As the children entered their bedroom, she could hear very faintly, the computer in the attic, bleeping. George was playing Space Invaders. Twenty-five minutes later, she laid down the newspaper and glanced at the clock. Next to the timepiece was a photograph taken on holiday three years earlier. It showed her, Georg, and the children posing for the camera, all wearing outsized sombreros which hid their faces in shadow. It was twelve-thirty. She yawned and stood, stretching. After switching off the lights, she went upstairs to bed, where she was lulled to sleep by the sound of space invaders. Perhaps fifteen minutes later, she vaguely felt Jorge get into bed beside her. She woke the next morning to the tinny sound of pop music playing through her bedside radio. The space in the bed next to her was, as usual, empty. Yuri started work at 6 a.m., so was always gone by the time she awoke. She lay there for about five minutes, then decided to get up. After another five minutes, she clambered out from beneath the sheets, dressed, went downstairs, and made breakfast for herself and the children. She then began to wash up the plates and dishes from the previous day's meals. She heard the voices and footsteps of Pat and Pip enter the kitchen behind her, followed by the crunching noise of two bowls of cornflakes being eaten. Snatches of contralto conversation reached her ears, but the words made no sense to her. The children left still chatting to catch the bus to school. She stacked the last saucepan on the draining board, turned around and began to clear away the breakfast things. The rest of the day passed without incident, and at four she had almost finished her book. 
the children had come home early and were now playing computer games in their bedroom. George should be home in a few minutes. She put her book down and wondered if there was time for a nap. Deciding there was, she laid her head against the back of the chair. Slightly less than ten minutes later, there was the sound of a key turning in the front door. The plain oak door swung open slowly, then, after some seconds, swung shut again. Jürgen called a greeting to his wife, but she didn't wake up. Anyone standing in the doorway would have heard the voice coming from empty space, but if they had looked closer, they might have made out a slight distortion of the air, like heat haze outlining a human figure. They would have seen the outline mount the stairs and begin to climb them with heavy, distantly echoing footsteps. The outline, very faint, shimmering slightly, reached the top of the stairs, turned left, and continued walking. Downstairs, she opened her eyes and looked at the clock. It was twelve minutes past four. Beside the clock was a photograph. It showed her, three years earlier, on holiday, wearing an absurd sombrero. In the photograph, she was flanked by three other human figures, all completely silhouetted. Two-dimensional lightless shadows, as if superimposed after the picture was taken. The disturbance in the air passed the children's bedroom, from which came the sound of two high-pitched voices in endless discourse, rapid exchanges, in an insane alien 